Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to start a series on how to tune Mega Squirt plug and play computers or the older versions as well with Tuner Studio. This first episode is about first startup when you first get your ECU plugged in and you got your vacuum line to your computer and you're basically ready to start up. So basically when you buy your plug and play ECU, plug it into your factory wiring harness and then you will plug in one vacuum line from your intake and then you're pretty much ready to go to for your first startup it will not run right at the start so i'm going to show you how to make it right my test dummy is a 94 mazda mx3 that i swapped in a kf v6 engine with a 60 millimeter turbo you have to make sure that you have your wideband wired to your computer, which is your plug and play ECU. So once you're actually running the firmware, it'll actually communicate with your air fuel ratio gauge and you can have your computer know what air fuels you're actually running. So now get your laptop, get it plugged in through your serial cable to your computer in the car and then start it up and start up your Tuner Studio. You can download the Tuner Studio on the website. Let her fire up all the way. Make sure everything's loaded right up and then you're ready to go. Now I want you to open basic setup and open your fuel VE table. Slide it to the right, get it out of the way so you can also look at your air fuel ratio on your gauge cluster. Okay, now I have my VE table up, which is my fuel table, and also I have accessibility to my air fuel ratio. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to try and start my car. So just crank it over and see what happens. And what you're watching for is a high number or a low number on here. If you see like nine here, that means it's rich. If you see like 17, 18, that means it's lean. So what I'm gonna do is just keep an eye on that. And then if there's any problems, I can issue it later. I'm going to crank it over now. Okay, so it started and then stopped. And right now it is reading 13.9. All right, so I got my VE table up and I was running lean there. That's why it actually stopped running. So what I'm gonna do is open my warm-up enrichment and here it is and as you can see It's all loopy and not not done right at all So what I've got to do is I've got to raise it. So this line right here This is basically 100 and when I'm idling at full temp that's where it's gonna be but from underneath when your coolant's at 57 degrees or like 65 like mine is right now, you need more fuel. So what I've got to do is I'm going to raise these above the 100 line so it's going to give more fuel than it would if it was running at optimum temperature because when an engine is cold, it needs to run richer to get up to temp and air that's cold needs more air because it's denser so you need to compensate with more fuel. So I'm gonna add some in. So I've corrected a lot in here. I've got it going from about 250 down to 100 in a gradual smooth way. So basically if it's minus seven over here, it's gonna be putting 100% and a half compared to my actual VE table, which is right here. So it's going to take these numbers this is where the car is going to idle and multiply them by quite a bit. That's a good start. So basically you want it running rich to start and then you can pull it out later because you don't want to just run your car and then all of a sudden have it running lean while you're driving it around while it's warming up. But if this is a good start, then you can slowly, if it's running really, really rich, like 10, you can take this and then drop it a bit, take this, drop it a bit and then basically feel feel it out. And I've always had problems running in here, so I'm probably gonna add a little bit more later on, but this is a good start for now, so let's start it up. Okay, she is warming up, 
and as you can see it's just slowly going down the slope here so your temperature gauge is speaking to this green dot right here and as it warms up it's going to go down towards 180 my my car idles and um likes to be around 187 when it's up to temp so it's going to creep all the way up there so now just keep it running if it needs more fuel add some more fuel into the enrichment and then get it to operating temp before tuning any further Okay, the warm-up enrichment went really well. It's up to temp almost, and we're done with that. So for now, we can just close out of that, and we don't have to worry about it because we are up to temp. The next time you warm up your car, you definitely want to also adjust it multiple times, make sure your warm-up's in really good condition so you can actually have a reliable warm-up. Okay, now she's up to temp, just idling, and as you can see right here, I have an air fuel ratio of, of 10.2. That is very rich. So I'm going to get out of this screen and go to my VE table. So go to basic settings and then go to VE table and it'll pop right up. Is take some fuel out of the idle. So I'm gonna highlight a bunch in here since my tune isn't close yet so I'm just going to multiply it so I highlighted all these from 400 to 2100 rpm and up to 40 on the load I'm just going to multiply it by 0.9 so that is going to take 10% out so I'm gonna multiply it by 0.9 and then hit okay. Okay, I've got my air fuel ratios at 10.5, so that 10% only got me 0.3 of a point. So what I'm going to do is multiply it by another 20%. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.8. So I'm going to be removing 20% fuel by multiplying it by 0.8 and it changed the tone quite a bit on the engine there. So now it's running 12. Okay, before you go too much further, go in your basic setup, more engine constants, and make sure you have this incorporate AFR target, do not include target. So this is not going to allow your computer to make changes according to your air fuel ratio table. So you want it like that for first tuning so you get your tune really close and then if you want later you can turn it on. But then you're not fighting the computer making changes. So right now it, this is just a raw tune. So I'm just going to go back here. And again, we are in the same situation. We're still running rich. We're, we're running um, 12 0. So I'm going to take out some fuel. I'm going to take 20% out again. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.8. And then OK again. So I'm taking more fuel out. And then you can see this shooting up so now I'm getting closer where I want to be I'm at 13.9 I want to be at about 14.5 at the basically leanest so if you have a daily driver and you want it really reliable just have it about 14.5 you can go a little bit richer if you want it to have like a, a solid like tune because if you have it any leaner it could miss once in a while like misfire so it's good to have a little bit of fuel in there just so it runs solid like as you can tell she's running very very solid so let's see where she settles here 14.4 14.3 okay I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there for now and later on if I have to I will make some changes but let's see where she settles down after that rev 14.5 14.4 okay that's good we're gonna leave that there for idle 
Okay, so now we're gonna open up our timing. So we're gonna get out of the actual fuel tables and go to timing and see how our ignition table's going. So as you can see, I'm running 21 degrees of timing. Some people like to run in between 10 and 15, but engines can handle a little bit more. The higher timing you have, the more power the engine will actually make at idle, which means it's not going to die as easily and you're also using less fuel because you're using the fuel more appropriately because the higher your timing you can get into it before it's actually near knock it will make the most power so right now like if i had it at 10 degrees of timing i would be using more fuel to idle i know my idle's high but i like it high just so i don't stall it out much because it has a lightweight flywheel and everything so it stalls very easily so so basically for idle you want to run high timing as well as you would when you're basically getting into boost and everything you want to run the most timing you can to get the most out of your fueling without hurting your engine so there's obviously give and take when tuning idle you're just getting the proper timing so basically I'm going, just to show you, I've already, I already like this timing, but I'm gonna highlight this, and I'm going to multiply it by 30%. It's not gonna hurt anything, especially at such a low, low idle. So I'm gonna multiply it by 30. So I'm gonna multiply 1.3, and it'll still probably run. So if it makes more power, the RPMs are gonna go up. So basically we're gonna be able to tell if it's gonna make more power and basically that means more efficient because you're getting more RPMs out of the same amount of fuel just by adding the time we'll see what happens okay she's starting to miss a bit so basically it is a little bit high so I had it where it should be so you can just keep taking taking timing out and timing in and see how you like it see if it runs you're not gonna hurt anything at idle so don't get all scared and everything just learn how to tune learn what changes happen with what and by doing so you will learn what you can do when you're in boost and making trying to make power and you know what does what like increasing the timing too much can hurt things um, power wise and internally on the engine wise but be, being I've seen so many people run very 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 economic uh, idols so I'd like people to stop doing that to be completely honest so I'm gonna take some of that timing back out and you can hear the idle dropped a little bit so my timing could be a little bit higher so that timing change did affect the idle. It went down just a little bit. You could hear it. So I'm gonna add 10%, see what happens. So we're just farting around here and I'm just trying to prove a point that, so okay, multiply by 1.1 is 10%. So I'm just trying to prove a point that timing is very important with idle as well. So, so I didn't get too, too much RPM out of that, but I did get an increase in RPM. So basically, I'm pretty good anywhere from 20 to 24 degrees. I I like 21, it's not too, too high, but it's actually like it, somewhere in the middle of knock and running way too less timing and wasting a bunch of fuel idling. So basically, I'm gonna revert that. Take 5% out, let's say, and see how she runs. So I'm gonna multiply this by point nine five she's liking that so basically after all the changes I've just made I've only increased it by five percent which is not much maybe one or two degrees I think we started at 21 where that blue dot is so right now I'm happy with that so I'm gonna move on all right, so that's it for this episode today. You learned about how to set your warm-up enrichment, your idle air-fuel ratio, and also your timing. 
all three are very important to have a reliable setup and it just takes note about the timing because people will run 10 degrees of timing all day long at idle and you can run more and save fuel just on your idle because you can make more power for the same amount of fuel going into your engine so just take note of that for when you're doing your tune and i hope you watch for the next episode i'm gonna have multiple multiple tuning episodes for tuning plug and play mega squirt ecu so i'll see you in the next one like comment and subscribe see you later this is usually fairly fighting